This video is about how to rationalize a single term real denominator with square root. And so look at this first example where we have 1 over the square root of 3. This denominator term here, square root of 3, is a radical term, meaning it has a root in it. And so our goal is actually to write this fraction without any root in the denominator. Now to do this, there's a little trick we're going to employ, which is we're going to multiply this fraction by 1 However, we're going to write 1 in the form of the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now, the reason we're going to do this is because when we multiply straight across denominators and numerators, as we would with fractions, we end up with, on, across the top, 1 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 3. Across the bottom, we end up with the square root of 3 squared. Okay, but the square root of 3 squared is just 3. And so what we've now done is written the fraction as something where the denominator is not a radical term. In this next one, we're starting with a fraction which is entirely underneath a square root. So I would say a good first step here would be to split up the square root. This is just using our uh, square root properties. And now it becomes easier to see the denominator as a radical term of, of root 5. So we're going to use the same trick of multiplying by 1, but in the convenient form of the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. And when doing so, we'll multiply straight across the top and straight, straight across the bottom. The square root of 2 times the square root of 5 would be the square root of 10. And across the bottom, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, like last time, well, we're done. We've now written the fraction where the denominator is not a radical term. In this next example we'll look at, uh, notice that the numerator is a little more complicated this time, but we're going to follow the same steps of know we want to rationalize the denominator only here. We'll multiply by the square root of 3 so that those will simplify. Now I have to multiply the top by the same thing because I'm really just multiplying by 1. The result would be 3 times the square root of 15 over 3. So we multiply radicals with radicals and leave the 3 factor in front. The square root of 15 can't be reduced, but you'll notice that these 3's, 3 over 3, can be reduced to 1, so this results in just the square root of 15. In this next example, let's notice we have a denominator that has a variable in the radical or underneath the radical sign, which is fine. We still do the same method of multiplying by the denominator, which is the square root. Now across the top, remember whole numbers or, or non-radicals can't be mixed with radicals, so we'll just leave this as 2 times the square root of 7x. But down below, we have the square root of 7x times the square root of 7x, which is just 7x. And since this is a radical 7x and this is not, those cannot be simplified nor can the 2 and 7 be reduced, so we're done right here. Let's look at another example. Uh, this time, like before, we're going to split up the root so that we can see the denominator radical term clearly. And notice that it's the square root of 48. Now, before we go too far, you might recall that that's possible to reduce in and of itself, which will make our lives a little bit better. If we reduce the square root of 48, we can do so by factoring 48 to be 16 times 3. And 16 is a perfect square, meaning I can write this new result as the square root of 5a. That didn't change up top. But the denominator can be simplified to be 4 times the square root of 3, where really the square root of 16 is just 4. And the square root of 3 stays as is. When we employ our same trick as before to get rid of this radical sign over the 3, all we have to multiply by is the radical part of this denominator. I don't need to multiply by 4 root 3. I can just multiply by root 3. And of course, same thing on top. And it's not wrong to multiply by 4 root 3 on top and bottom. It just makes more work in the end to simplify. So only the radical part is needed. If I multiply straight across, What's underneath this root would be multiplied with what's underneath this root, giving us the square root of 15a. And then down below, the 4 remains, and then square root of 3 times square root of 3 would be just 3. 
And so now we can simplify our denominator once more, making this 15a all over 12. And 15 does not have any perfect square factors, so we can't go any further. That's our result. In this last example here, we'll once again split up the numerator and denominator so that we have the square root of 6x over the square root of 27. And before we get too far, we should recognize that the square root of 27 has a perfect square factor that we could use to simplify already. So this will be really 9 times 3, where 9 is a perfect square. I'll leave the numerator as is. And notice I can write this now as the square root of 6x over, instead of the square root of 9, I'll just write 3, square root of 3. Okay, so there still is a radical part of the denominator to be reduced, but it's a lot smaller of a number than it was previously. So now I just have to multiply by that radical part of square root of 3. Same thing top and bottom, giving us now on top the square root of 18x all over 3 times 3. So this root 3 and this root 3 turn into that 3 there. So let's simplify this down a little bit. Notice that 18 above is also uh, has a perfect square factor. There would be 9 times 2x over 9. And so the square root of 9 above is 3 times the square root of 2x all over 3 below. Notice that these cancel giving us the square root of 2x. That would be our final result.